Alright, so in the last video I meant to show you guys one of these cut open. So this is a sugar cube cantaloupe from our backyard garden. Um, and we've been getting a lot of them. They're actually really good. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like when you cut one in open. This is what it looks like. They're really nice orange. Uh, you can see some more that I have been cutting up over here. So this, this one's a little smaller, but they've more or less been about this size. Um, and just productive. I've been having these probably about hmm, three to five of these a week. Uh, and I just keep keep them cut up in, uh, in the fridge and they've been a hit with the family. Everybody's enjoying them. I take them for breakfast or a snack after lunch. And uh, yeah, they're really good and sweet. it's E here from Virginia Grace Living so it's starting to feel a little bit more like fall around here and I've started pulling up some of the things that were from our first you know spring summer planting so all the tomatoes have been pulled up except for I have a few that I left in that I planted later um, all the okra that was way too tall to even pick and uh, some of the pods started getting a little hard uh, earlier than they were supposed to so Went ahead and cleared that out, but um, while that's kind of bittersweet, you know, um, I kind of love this time of year for gardening. So I'm going to get started planting some of the things that I have shared with you before in the uh, fall garden planner and planting schedule. Uh, I'm maybe a day or two off from what I posted as far as the schedule goes, but uh, it's starting to cool off a little bit, and I think it was just a little bit too hot even to plant some of the stuff anyways. And it gave my uh, transplants and stuff time to mature a little bit more. So, but anyhow, so I have a lot of blank canvases here uh, at the homestead right now. So it's fun to fill them in with different things and everything. So some of the things I've been direct seeding, uh, just for you guys, I've done lettuce, some uh, spinach, carrots, uh, those type of things. I've direct seeded, and I'm going to do some. Uh, what do you see? Some radishes soon, all right? But I'm gonna plant some other things today and I'll walk you through kind of with what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna be planting some broccoli and collards in this bed. These are onions and leeks. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put these yet, but in here we're gonna be doing the broccoli and collards. I'm probably gonna do collards on one side and broccoli on the other. Um, so these are some of the broccoli plants. Some of them may have got a little bit too much water at times but otherwise they're fairly healthy and look like they're ready to go on the ground so we're gonna get these planted in and then watered here we're gonna try some cauliflower uh, some cilantro we're gonna just put out just because it does better in the cool and some rutabaga uh, rutabagas aren't looking too great so I may have to seed some more of those as well but it's all good we're gonna get what we have here planted plant out the onions and leeks and call it a day
got these all planted in here. Pretty much everything I want to plant for today. Uh, got some rutabagas over here. Really hoping the rabbits don't come through and just tear up all my greens tonight, but we'll see. Went to use some of this chicken wire and I do not have enough to go around these beds. So I'm going to get these watered in and then we'll call it a night. So anyhow. So I also wanted to take the time to kind of go through some of what I would consider winners and losers of the 2022 gardening season. So there were some things that, you know, performed really well. I just enjoyed them a lot and others that didn't do too well in the garden or I just wasn't impressed with the flavor or whatever. Could be anything that, uh, that I didn't. But I'll go through my list with you guys and share kind of with you. And again, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Your growing region or even within the same you know zone 7b here uh, microclimates and soil and everything there's so many variables but uh, that can affect like the performance or, or something of everything so anyways I'll kind of go through and just share with you um, what I liked a lot and what I didn't like so much all right so for tomatoes specifically Top of the list, I think, for me was probably the Kellogg's breakfast tomatoes. Those were the nice orange, uh, large slicers. They're heirlooms, but they had just a great flavor. Uh, and also, another heirloom that I liked was the orange banana, which was a smaller um, tomato, San Marzano, very productive, good sauce tomato. Black cherry tomatoes for the cherries I liked a lot. The Sun Golds did fine as well. There's only two cherries that I did. Uh, and the Cherokee Purple were good. The flavor was good, but they weren't very productive and they seemed to not have a lot of disease resistance. Uh, the Indigo Pole Cherries were good, but they took a very long time to put on tomatoes and then for the tomatoes to ripen. Some of the ones I really didn't care for were the Speckled Romans. They were extremely prone to blossom end rot. I don't even know if I got one single tomato off of those that didn't have blossom end rot. And then also Hillbilly, I was not impressed, but again, that could be just my region. Uh, pineapple uh, didn't do well, but that, again, I'm going to try that one again, so we'll see. Um, some of the peppers that were really great that I enjoyed a lot were the Orange Habanero, Orange Scorpion. Really enjoyed the Sugar Rush Peach Peppers. I've used those quite a bit to make a few different uh, jams and hot sauces. The lipstick peppers is really good small snacking like sweet uh, pepper some of them are a little bigger but they're really good um, cayennes of course the calgaristas were really good and they're starting to put on a lot of peppers again it's like the beginning they put on a lot and then there was nothing and then they put on again so they're not one of those that seem to be a continuous harvest it's more like you know a determinant almost but it's a pepper um, and there were some other uh, peppers that were really good, but some that didn't do really well were the red habaneros and the Jvarskis. The flavor was amazing on the first few ones that we had that did really well, and it seemed like a lot of them kind of got uh, blossom rot or something as well. So that could be my fault, but I don't know. They were good, big peppers. I'm definitely going to grow them again. I'm not. It's not on the do not grow again list. And then. Uh, yeah, so a few of the other things were cantaloupes, really good. The sugar cube hybrid we've enjoyed a lot. Um, and the Supremo pickling cucumbers were really good. Um, that's not an exhausted list, guys, but that's that's kind of most of the things that were noteworthy, either good or bad, right? Um, and again, like I said, always take what one person says does well for them with a grain of salt. Always try it yourself and just see how it does for you. Hope you guys are having a good uh, end of summer, beginning of fall. Hope you guys get something planted out there. Uh, if you do, go ahead and let me know what you're planting. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. God bless.